<laughs> so just uh, as an example of something I consider is in the low risk but high impact bucket of social media is Wikipedia. It's always one of the first results. And guess what? We can participate in this conversation. We can go to the notes tab. We can provide information about our public trials and our content. And nobody's going to slap us for that. OK, and then what happens with Wikipedia happens. But we're documented on the notes tab as doing it, but not doing it through an agency, doing it through a badged physician that's identified by our employer. You want to do this one? Uh, I, I, I never go to these sites to talk about Bing. No, well, you, you, do you understand the notion of crowdsourcing? You go to Amazon and you, you see a book that's suggested for you. That, that's relevant because they're looking at all sorts of preferences. And so that stuff becomes important to you. And that's happening through social media too. Right now it's a little overwhelming. There are a bunch of different sites. Some of us tweet, some of us don't. But eventually in the next year we're going to see this stuff get organized and relevant and easier to use. Right, and so it's called collaborative filtering, so it's obviously relevant for books, it'll soon be relevant for doctors, medicines, and, and things of that nature. Um, and that's the point. It, yeah. The only thing that's changed, right, social media is really not new, it's just now easy to search and it's easy to propagate online. Where you used to have to be, you know, have a technical degree to put up a website, now you can set up a Twitter account in about eight minutes and begin tweeting and begin to follow an audience. So we're talking about turnkey tools that accelerates information and makes it all the more measurable for us, and now we can engage and monitor and do all these cool things if we're not afraid of it. Yeah, and a perfect example of that would be Sermo. I mean, the tools for Sermo weren't available 20 years ago, not even 10 years ago. The fact that you could buy something off the shelf, make it scalable, make it protected, and get the kind of community aspect of it essentially for free, uh, you're seeing that on, on a lot of sites now. They're, they're, it's almost a plug-in now. If you want to add a community to your site, it's, it's a module. It's not even uh, code anymore. Uh, so, as far as choosing a doctor, once again, a basic healthcare kind of situation. Uh, in the old days, uh, you know, old days being late 1990s for many of us, uh, people were passive consumers of physician services. The physician was king. Uh, you basically went to one physician. It was probably, you know, paid for by your health plan. Um, and you didn't really check around because you didn't have the means. I mean, other than asking your friends and family, you couldn't go to the web. You couldn't compare doctors online. Um, and you tended to go to your family and, and once again, three quarters of the time here, you would, you would use their recommendation, but today... Today, there are a million sites to help you rate doctors. And that may be of interest to you or not, but in the next slide, you'll see that the physicians seem to think it's interesting. Um, they are looking at these sites and recognizing that they're practice builders. So we ought to be looking at these sites as well. And just like you go and check out your... Uh Sometimes your ranking is on Google, or at least I know Kevin does that every day. Daily, Just, yeah. hourly. Uh, physicians are doing the same thing. So it's called ego once, surfing. Thank you. Uh, physicians are doing it the same way because they want to see what their brand looks like. They want to see what their ratings look like, almost like somebody who's on eBay to make sure that your, uh, your ranking is, is good enough and your, and your credibility is good. Physicians uh, aren't, um, aren't shy about uh, checking out their, their own profiles as well as their competitors in local markets. So now you're confronted with a disease. You have thyroid cancer. You do, right now. You've just been diagnosed by me. You have a decision to make. You can go to your medical expert, or you can trust 100 people that have had thyroid cancer, have experienced the whole course of therapy, and are going to recommend options for you. Which one do you choose? Some of us would say we're going to stick with the doctor. Many of us would say, I'm going to trust the patients that have been through this. But I don't or, think anybody can dispute that it's a combination, at least. And certainly, we're not advocating the, the cut the physician out of the loop. There's certainly, you know, this is this is drawn to make a point. But certainly, you want to have both. I mean, we've seen situations online where people take the advice of the community, they don't get diagnosed early enough, and they end up, you know, developing something very nasty or unfortunately uh, dying because they didn't get treatment. Um, so we, we obviously. Uh, physicians have the medicines, they have the power of prescription, they have the experience, but the communities obviously have the emotional side, uh, the recommendation. If you're not happy with your physician, they might be able to recommend another. So it's part of the holistic way you want to treat yourself, but it just becomes another resource. And I would say equally credible, uh, somebody who's maybe living with a condition versus somebody who sees two or three cases a, you know, a year in their practice. I and mean, one of the problems of going to your doctor right now is that you may bring in a stack of information, you may be preloaded, but generally, your doctor, maybe because of malpractice or maybe because they're afraid of all the other information out there that might contradict them, they're providing options. And if you've done a doc-patient dialogue study, patients don't like options. They want a recommendation. 
And if that's not going to come from the doctor, maybe it comes from a site like Cure Together. I beg you to go on Cure Together, find any disease that you're familiar with, and go ahead and fill out a profile on it, and you will see the future of healthcare. Because what's happening here is a crowdsourcing of disease state. And I think this is a wonderful thing for our industry. I think this is where patients can gather together. There's a negative side of it, misery likes company. But now we're empowering patients with information that they wouldn't have otherwise gotten, right? How many of us, if we have a specific disease state, know somebody else that has? Now we've got hundreds or thousands of them. So try it out, and then you'll understand why it's important to pharma. Okay, so for those who were not paying attention, which is at least Kevin, and maybe some others of you. Uh, not when you were talking. Do a quick review. Uh, Abe Lincoln, the beaver, and the weird guy. Can we have in a big applause suit? for Joe Shields, who photoshopped this picture? Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Six and a half hours he spent <laughs> manipulating that photo. Not quite. Not quite. But um, anyway, this is really to say look, if, if the things were taken away, our normal levers, our normal interventions, what are we going to do? Obviously, you need to have a plan B. Um, you know, we've, we've seen big changes in DTC. We, we may see big changes next week uh, as a result of the FDA hearings. We've certainly seen big changes with the results of, of paid search, and that will certainly continue. Uh, number two was, uh, what was the point of number two? I'm not sure, yeah. It's just uh, the future, the future, what the future may look like. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, actually, we, we uh, had done this once before, and um, we asked the audience at the end if they thought that that was a plausible case study, and one woman said, no, nobody from Silicon Valley would move to St. Louis. <laughs> so, uh, or come up with a logo that bad. Uh, number three, uh, the currency shift. You know, do you want to pick, uh, for Boniva, Sally Field, or maybe somebody who's an unknown, kind of in the, in the CBS media world, but maybe is quite well known on the internet scene? Bang for the buck, you're going to win here because... Sally Field's agent charges a little bit more than Happy Slips. And yet Happy Slips' reach is significant for the cost that you pay in. The evolution of search, once again, it's, it's not necessarily always about relevancy. It could be about computation. It could be about decision support. It could be about immediacy. And who knows what else? So once again, the fragmentation of search and the fact that you may stop using Google for everything and start using select search engines for different kinds of queries. And then finally? Cure Together, try it out. I mean, do two things. Go to Cure Together and try it out, and go to YouTube and subscribe to your brand name or your client's brand name, and you'd be amazed what you'd find. You might be afraid to show it to your client or bring it internally, but you'll get over that. This is a plug for Kevin. Oh, yeah, because I'm, I don't like writing white papers, and I don't like uh, policies. Um, <laughs> So you wrote one. <laughs> so I, I wrote one because I was so tired of hearing the excuse that this thing's complicated. It's not that complicated, okay? And don't wait for the FDA to come down with some magic list of things. We have to figure this out ourselves. The people in this room will figure out what's appropriate. And just use your conscience, you know? That should be the guide. Don't do anything stupid. Um, uh, you know, be transparent. Uh, read this white paper. It may give you some ideas. It's based on some of the work that we did at J&J &J and Merck to sort of unlock social media. Okay, this is the big finish. Uh, Kevin was also responsible for this. The so uh, you can expect to be disappointed, I'm sure. The big finish is, there is no big finish. We tend to overestimate what's gonna change immediately and underestimate, you know, sort of the long term. So we're in the midst of a big change uh, in terms of the way that people are consuming, finding information, being influenced on healthcare. And I think the people in this room have the power to change the way the pharma embraces this significantly. And I hope you will. That doesn't mean you hire Nultz Consulting. You can hire Zoe. Uh, but for the love of God, get your com companies comfortable with this. It doesn't cost a lot of money, and it's extremely important. Okay, and I guess the last word is, you know, change is more evolutionary than revolutionary, as you'll see probably next week. You won't see uh, tablets coming down from the mountain, but you at least will see an open discussion. Uh, different stakeholders in the healthcare system explaining to the FDA why it's a disservice to patients to, to limit their choice when it comes to search and hey, other Joe. online behaviors. Yes, hey, sir. Hey, Joe, check it out. Joe Shields and Kevin Nolte know how to present and entertain and inform great stuff. It's a, it's a new word that we've invented, pharmatainment. <laughs> <laughs> Let's put the fun back in pharma. Yeah, okay, we're done. Thank you.